Okay, what I wanted to do today was go over how to install these C-clip type pin locks in these pistons. This only works if you have a design of piston that's where the pinhole comes all the way to the outer edge like this. We're going to use that part of the piston for leverage when installing these locks. The bottom of the lock, the open part, or part of the lock will end up being straight down. So, first of all, these are manly forged 11cc pistons. See that it's marked front for the front of the engine. I have some uh, 4340 forged rods and a nice bronze bushing. You have to take these to your machine shop first and make sure that this piston pin is correctly fitted. It should be a nice tight fit, but once you get it started, correctly fitted to the rod, you want that pin to be able to pivot inside the rod bushing. Okay, so once that's done, I tried installing these several different times. First by uh, using the little pin notch here and starting one end in and trying to work my way around. I tried to use my fingers and that didn't work. I tried using a small pick or screwdriver to force it in there and that didn't work. It seemed to be a lot of frustration. And so I looked up different techniques for doing this. And I kind of came up with one on my own that worked really well. And that is, I'm making sure that this pin is installed in the piston. What you want to do is you want to set that pin so that it's just below the bottom edge of where that groove is. You can see where the pin lock groove is inside there. And you want to use your finger underneath to hold that pin kind of in place so it's just below that pin lock groove. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you a place to uh, leverage against. You're going to start these pins in with the open end in down and you're going to force that inside. If you don't have this pin in here, what happens is the, the open ends end up going past the pin lock groove and down and what, you don't want them getting past that pin lock groove because they, they get into the bore where the pin sits and they could scratch that bore and that wouldn't be good. But you can use that pin to set the depth at how far that open end can go in and then once you get those that end in, that open end in, you're going to use the uh, this part of the piston right here because it comes all the way out to the outside. I can use that part of the piston to force the top, what will end up being the top of the pin lock, into the groove and it just snaps in there real easy. So I was able to get these in without any kind of tools at all. Let's try this one. So now I've got it resting against that pin in there. And I'm just going to force that back side down. And you can hear it snap in. And now it's in there. Okay. Actually, I want one a little deep. I can force it back. There we go. Force it back with that piston pin. Okay. So now that the, the uh, retaining lock is in the groove, Okay, and you can take and actually tap it a couple times if you want, or you could take a screwdriver in there and you can grab the end of it and push on it a little bit. Um, I kind of got this one off a little bit off center, but I can always move that over with the screwdriver later on. And then you take the pin back out. Of course, you'd have to put your assembly lube on here first, set the pin halfway through, and put the rod in, and you'll work the the pin inside there and now because the other side is already locked you have this is all set up nice and easily you can come in here and lock this one and I'm not going to do it right now because I don't have the assembly lube on there but you get the idea um, I struggled with it for quite a while trying to get that first one in and then I finally figured out this worked pretty well for me so I hope that helps somebody